Hello and welcome to Simplified Unit Testing with the EF Core in Memory Provider. I'm Jason Taylor and I'm a solution architect for SSW. You can find me on Twitter at JasonGTAU or on my blog, codingflow.net. I've been developing software now for about 17 years and I've found that the most important principle is KISS or Keep It Simple Stupid. And this principle states that systems should be made as simple as possible but no simpler. And today I'm going to show you the simplest approach that I've found to unit testing applications that depend on Entity Framework Core. So I've divided this talk into four sections. We're going to start with the typical approach and I'll discuss some of the pain points associated with that approach. Then we'll look at the simplified approach and I'll demonstrate how you can use the in-memory provider to really simplify your overall approach. Then we'll discuss some of the limitations and concerns and finally I'll share with you some learning resources to help you get up and running. So what is the typical approach? So the typical approach has four steps. So the first one is we need to remove all of our dependencies on EF. So if we have dependencies on EF, then that typically means that we've got a dependency on an external database. And our unit tests cannot access external resources because if they do, that's going to slow down our whole test suite. And what are we going to do? We're not going to run those tests. They need to be fast so that we can get that feedback quickly. The next thing we'll do is we'll implement some abstractions. So typically what people implement is the unit of work and the repository pattern. Followed by that, we'll be able to begin writing our tests, but we'll actually have to create test doubles first. So these are our dummy objects that we can use to test our system. So we'll typically create a dummy unit of work and a bunch of dummy repositories so that we can test. And then finally, we can write unit tests. So hands up here, who is familiar with this process? So everyone, and ha hands up if you like this process. Okay, so 2% of the room, maybe, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, so, but this is a difficult process, and for new developers, it's a lot to learn to get up and running. And what I'm seeing is that time and time again, people are writing very few tests, if any. So let's take a look at a simplified approach where we can do away with some of this pain. So the simplified approach is in complete contrast to the typical approach. We don't need to remove our dependencies on EF, and we would therefore won't need to implement any abstractions. We can actually use the DB context where it's required. We won't need to create test doubles. In our unit tests, we're going to use the DB context there as well. So we'll just be focusing on one thing, writing unit tests. So hands up again, who thinks I'm crazy? So you see, so you're wrong. I'm simple, and I like simple things. So let me show you how we can do this. It's with the EF Core in-memory provider. It's just a database provider, but it's been built for testing purposes. The big difference is, is it's in memory, so it's very fast, and it's not dependent on those external resources, so there's no overhead of those I.O. operations. Uh, it's lightweight with minimal dependencies. Its dependency is Entity Framework Core. So let me show you how this works. So I've got two demonstrations for you today. In the first demonstration, we're going to test a simple query. And this query is uh, just getting a list of customers. And it does two things. It gets the list of customers without applying any kind of filtering. And it also orders it by name. So we can write two tests for that. But let me show you first uh, how we can wire in the EF Core in-memory provider. So it's quite simple. It's a single package. And if I just have a look at the dependencies here, you can see the dependency is on Microsoft Entity Framework Core in memory. So .NET Core 2.0 was released on Monday, so I've upgraded this solution to 2.0, uh, and everything's working great. So it's a very, very simple process. So the rest of the dependencies there are just on testing. So let's have a look here. So we're going to write two tests. So the first one is it should return all customers. So we'll start by newing up a query. So get customer query. Now you can see that the customer query requires a DB context, and uh, we'll have to new that up as well. So context equals a new Northwind context. So I'm using a Northwind database that I've built. And so we need to use this constructor, and it accepts a DB context options. Uh, so we'll pass in the options, and we'll have to new that up as well. So with the options, uh, we need to use the DB context options builder. And we'll make that of type Northwind context. And we can simply say, because we have that dependency on in-memory, we can simply say use in-memory database. Now we also have to supply a database name. This is new to .NET Core 2.0. We actually didn't need to do this in the past, but I'll go ahead and just give it a simple name. 
Northwind. And then we can just return the options. Okay, so now we have everything we need to begin our test. Okay, so we'll grab the result. And it's just simply query.execute. And then we can assert, uh, actually we're gonna, we're gonna ensure that it returns all customers, so we need to seed the database as well. So I have a helper method to seed the database here. And you can see it down the bottom, it just seeds six customers, so we need to assert that six customers are returned. So if we go assert dot equal <coughs> six and result dot count. Okay, with that in place, I can do a build. I've set my test to run after build, so that should run and those tests should pass. Okay, quite simple. Now for the second test, I'm just gonna borrow this code and we're gonna make sure that the customers are returned in the correct order. Okay, so we can say that alphabetically, Beth Smith should be first. So we can whack that in there. And then we can say result.first.name. Oh, add a U. No, all good. Okay, now if I run those, let's see what happens. Okay, so that fails. And the reason that it fails is even though we're newing up a new context with a new in-memory database for each test, it's actually reusing the same database. And you may have guessed that because I'm using the same database name. Now what Microsoft recommends that you do is to name each database after the test. So if I name this one should order customer by name and the other one is named should return all customers, uh, both of those tests will pass. But this is pretty ugly. This is not the simplest approach that I could find. Um, I found that I'd actually traded one form of complexity, uh, mocking of my abstractions for another form of complexity, the heavy handed management of the context. So I've created a new solution. Let's have a look at this new solution. So we've got a customer's controller and it's a pretty typical web API controller built on .NET Core 2.0 and you can see that it's got a number of methods. So we're returning customers, we're getting customers by ID, and we're uh, creating, updating, and deleting customers. So I've written 12 tests for that controller, and you can see at the moment, 11 of them are failing, uh, and it's because they're all sharing the same database. But what I've actually done is I've written these tests the way I'd like to write my tests. They're very simple. So you can see get customers returns correct type. We've just got our range, act and assert, and nothing else aside from what, what we actually want to test. It's really clear what that's doing. And we've got another one here, and they all follow this pattern, arrange, act and assert, and there's nothing else in there that's kind of detracting from the actual test itself. So those tests are really as simple as possible. So let's have a look at how this is constructed, and then we'll look at how we can get this to work. So we've got a constructor here, uh, and a constructor in X unit runs before each test. So in our constructor, we're basically setting up our context and we're seeding the database. And then right down the bottom, what runs after each test is the dispose method. So that's a pretty good pattern for, for what we're trying to achieve. But our problem right now is that they're all running against the same database. Now I found about three different ways to fix this. But what I'm going with lately is the simplest approach, good.newgood.toString. So now we have a unique database for each test, each, each test run. Now the other thing that I've been doing is a little bit of cleanup. So I run created, And the reason that I do that is because at the end of each test, I'm going to run deleted. So I'm not going to have all of these databases uh, sitting in memory for the test duration. They'll drop out after all the tests are running, but if I've got a really large test suite, um, that's going to consume a fair bit of memory. So now, with those things in place, if I run that, all of these tests are going to pass. Fingers crossed. There we go. So fantastic. So now we have a, a quite simple approach to unit testing these systems, but there's one other thing that that I've implemented, and that is uh, an abstract base class. Uh, so instead of having all of this information in this controller class, with, which would then have to be repeated for other controllers that we're testing, I've implemented a Northwind test base. So we can actually delete all of this, and we can delete all of this, and we can just inherit 
or base our class on Northwind test base. There we go. So now all of that logic associated with managing the context is in a completely separate class and our tests still run. Uh, let me show you that class. It's going to be exactly what you expect. Okay, so we just have a constructor uh, which news up the context. We've got our field level variable so we can access the context in our tests and we've got our dispose methods. So that's a really simple approach. You can take it a little bit further. For example, you might want to have uh, a different method for testing your queries because they can share all of the same context. It can run against the same context. But for testing your commands or those things that are writing to the database, you definitely want a separate instance for each test. OK, so let's have a talk about some of the limitations and concerns that are associated with this approach. So the first thing is, in memory is not a relational database. In fact, EF Core is not relational. It can support relational and NoSQL. But the fact is that using this pro approach, your constraints aren't going to be enforced. You could, in fact, violate referential integrity. Um, but this is, this is a small issue because you need to remember that what you're testing is not Entity Framework Core, and you're not testing your database and its behaviors. You're testing something else. You're testing something that depends on Entity Framework Core. So what's important is that in-memory behaves approximately like a real database, and it does a really great job at that. So next are concerns. There's three common concerns that are raised uh, with this approach. The first one is you're writing integration tests and not unit tests, uh, and that's not true. Uh, to write an integration test, I'd actually need to test against the provider that I'm going to be using in production. So if I was using SQL Server in production, I'd need to test against the SQL Server uh, provider. Uh, writing integration test against in-memory would only test in-memory, and that's not going to production, so those tests have no value. So the next one is lack of isolation. You're exercising code that has dependencies on Entity Framework Core. And that's true, I am, but I'm also exercising code that has dependencies on .NET Core. And I'm okay with that. I trust .NET Core and I trust Entity Framework Core. So I'm happy with this approach. And finally, the unit of work and repository patterns are best practice. And that's true, they are best practice. Um, but the fact of the matter is that Entity Framework for some time now has implemented both of those patterns. So the DB context is a unit of work and the DB set is a repository. Now I'll stop there. If you are building a big uh, enterprise system and you want really clean separation of concerns from your frameworks, it is a good idea to implement the unit of work and the repository pattern. Uh, but the good news is you can use in-memory behind that as well. So instead of mocking your unit of works and repositories, just new them up with a context in the same way as what you've seen here today, and you'll gain a lot of these benefits. <coughs> All right, so finally, some learning resources. So the first one is the slides and source code for these demonstrations. So you can find it on bit.ly forward slash testing, or on my, uh, on my uh, GitHub repo at JSONGT. Uh, then in uh, October, we're running a .NET Core Superpowers. We're going to cover all of this and more, everything you need to get up and running with .NET Core 2.0. Uh, it'll be myself and my colleague here, Brendan Richards. Uh, it's a full day event. It's $49 and we include all meals. Uh, if you're interested, please do book in quickly because they do tend to sell out. Uh, next, if you enjoy that, you might like to check out the Angular Superpowers Tour. So same deal, we're going to show you everything you need to get up and running with Angular in the Enterprise, and that's running on Friday the 17th of November. So in summary today, I've shown you everything you need to do to uh, implement simplified unit testing for systems that depend on Entity Framework Core using the in-memory provider. The four important steps are, you don't need to remove your dependencies on Entity Framework Core. You can, in fact, use the DB context directly. Now, because of this, you're not going to need to implement any abstractions, and you're not going to need to implement test doubles. You'll use the DB context directly in your system and also in your tests. So that's going to leave you to focus on just one thing, and that's writing unit tests. Thank you. Yes.